Good morning, happy centering people. Um, I'm going to sit down. I am going to play a bit and I'd invite you to have a watch and then, then go and play by yourselves. We've talked about space and spaciousness and I uh, frequently space out when I go, space! Ooh. I don't know what I mean when I say space. How do I connect with space? This is a little bit woo-woo for me. It's all a little bit new age. How, what, 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 what? So, how do I make my sense of space a little bit more tangible, a little bit more real? Ah, there's the question. So the exercise is working out if we can do that. The first thing to know is that, hooray for neuroscience, it's now showing us that this space, everywhere that I can reach, is mapped in my brain um, in the same way that where my limbs actually are. So where my limbs are and where my limbs can be is all mapped as me, part of my space, and that's called peripersonal space by the neuroscientists. So as much the space between my fingers is me, so the space in front of me, beneath my arms, between my arms, is me. So the space, if I can reach all that, then my brain maps that as my space, as part of me. That's the good news, because it means my system is there already and it's working. What I am seeking to do is to notice that system better, more clearly. So if you think of a time when uh, you've misplaced yourself slightly and you might walk into a door, or almost walk into a door, and you go, whoa! And there's just, there's a sense just before you hit the door that says there's something there, watch out. And you involuntary, involuntarily even pull back and then go, oh, it's a door, and it's only here that I recognize it. That's this system. So I uh, read in Oh, I was going to reach for a book, but I've not got it here. It's by Sandra Blakesley, and it's something like The Brain Has a Body of Its Own. It's a very good book, Sandra Blakesley. I'll add the link later. And we have um, neurons all over our skin that are called, I think they're called touch receptors. And yet the way she describes them actually makes it very clear that they're not touch receptors because touch surely is on off on off and these touch receptors don't work that way as you get closer so they start firing the closer you get the faster they fire until when you're touching they're on firing all the time so i think of them as proximity receptors you know like the little things on the back of a car the beep beep we have that in our system, in our hands, our arms, all over our skin. So all we need to do is start to pay attention to those signals because they're quite fine signals and they can stay below the level of our awareness. So we have an exercise to um, pay a little bit more attention to that, to encourage being able to notice those sensors going off. And that, for me, helps to create a real sense of space, not just an imaginary sense of space. So, I'm going to stand up, and it may look rather strange, but I'm going, just going to walk into the wall. I'm going to do it by closing my eyes. I'm also going to take my keys out of my pocket. Um, you can't see it. There's a radiator just here, a very thin radiator, and then there's the wall. 
and I'm going to walk into the wall with my eyes closed. The point is to feel any change in the air as I approach the wall. That's the best way I can describe it, as if the density of this space increases perhaps. Yeah, you try it, you might understand what I'm trying to say. So my eyes are closed. Realistically, I know the wall is one metre ahead of me, but even so, I'm just walking forwards and I'm sensing forwards to see if the air change. There, I have a changing feeling. Ooh, that's all. I'm going to keep going. There's another feeling. That's, that feels very close now. I'm just going to keep... Oh, that's horrible. Horrible. And we're there. Ooh. So, as I approach, my body is saying, James, stop! You're going to hit something. I've got stuff going off, information saying there's something in front, stop walking. So that's what I want you to do. Close your eyes, make sure there's nothing sticking out, all right? So the worst we're going to do is just hit a flat wall. Walk slowly, and it's not about walking up to the wall. Oh, there it is. It's about all this space on the way to the wall. Open your body and sense forwards so that your body is constantly making an inquiry. Where is that space? Oh, my eyes have started flickering um, as if they want to open, which I take as a sign that my body's telling me there's something in the way you should really see it. Fair enough. Yeah, even more now. That's... Ah. So now the hairs on my arms are starting to prick up that's a very difficult step to make. And I can now feel that my head is pulling back away from something that's right in front of me. Well, so do that a few times and bump into the wall, by all means. And then start seeing whether you can walk. Where's that? Is that the first signal? And find where the change happens. Oh, about there. Can you see, if I bring up my arm without moving my body, I don't quite touch the wall. If I move in a little bit, I touch the wall. If I move away, I'm a long way. Boom. But this is what we mean by peripersonal space. My system has a, a boundary here so that when I step towards that boundary, my system wakes up a bit more. And by practicing this rather strange exercise, I can wake up that system and I can learn to pay more attention. It's quite, you know, I have to be sensitive to hear the, the warnings go off at, out at that distance. So walk into the wall a few times and then walk Hmm. Oh, too close. I've already touched the wall. Closer than I should have been. So, there is no wrong, there is no right. It is all information. Okay, because there were warning signals, but on this occasion, I didn't notice them. As I got even closer, they became louder. So I went, oh, it must be that. No, it was the earlier ones. Once you've done that, you do it backwards. For me, I talk about having a porous back. So imagine all the pores in my skin opening, receiving, listening backwards. And then I do the same walking backwards into the wall and noticing how that feels. There's a big feeling. Boom, it's because I'm right next to it. Um, incidentally, I find it quite difficult to listen and talk to you. There's, there's a feeling. Mm. So it seems I haven't quite touched, I've touched the radiator. I haven't touched the wall with my back. 
go slowly and you will have a richer stream of information come. And then close your eyes again so you can't see it and think out of the side and shuffle this way. Oh, oh. Really make the point of walking into the wall so that you feel the full spectrum of this change. Yeah, there. I'm, my arm is moving away. I think it's uh, my hand was, you see. Mm, hold on. As I got here, my hand is, I'll do it at this angle so you can see. My hand is by my side, but suddenly it started drifting in like this. And I think it was, as it was getting close to the radiator, my hand didn't want to go anymore, even though there's still room for my shoulder and my body to go. So there's lots of information going on there. Come back to James height. Ta-da! Do all four sides. Take a while and you will, when you finish playing around this way, you will uh, have a heightened sense of space around you, of what is your space. This space is always here. We're not creating it with this exercise. We are awakening our awareness of this space, our conscious awareness of this space. Okay. Right now I'm feeling unbalanced. I've done front, I've done back, I've done this side. This side is complaining. Well, tough. Yeah. Okay, engaging with space, trying to make it tangible, making it real. And remembering it's, the space is always there. The connection with space is always there. The information is always there. It's just, am I consciously aware of it? With this exercise, I think you can be. So play, play, play. Uh, you can also do it with your head, I guess, if you find a low ceiling or stick a, a book out of a shelf. And then whoop, whoop, your head will wake up, right? Lots of things we can do just to wake this sense. I'm going to stop talking now. I would like you to go and start playing. It's been a long one. Thank you for listening. I think it's very worthwhile. Highly recommended. See you later. <laughs>